we are officially the most consistently inconsistent side in the second Bundesliga. With Kaiserslautern, we have played nine games, won three, drawn three, and lost three in the league. Can we actually try and win two games in a row in today's episode? Let's get into it and find out. So then guys, welcome back to the Red Devil Revival series here with Kaiserslautern and now for episode 15 of our series. Now then, as I just said in the intro, we at the moment are being essentially just consistently inconsistent. We win a game, we then draw a game, we then lose a game is essentially the story of our season so far. We cannot get a consistent run of form going and it is very, very frustrating at the current season, that is for sure. Of course, we are newly promoted, so it's not in the world. The main target is just to stay up, and we're not doing too bad in the league whatsoever. In terms of last episode, though, guys, if you did miss it, I ran through the rest of our transfers from the transfer window, and also we took on St. Pauli, a very tough second division side. There'll be a link right above me for you to click on so you go back and watch that episode now though before we do get into this episode properly today then guys if you do enjoy the video here today please do chuck a like down onto it as i always say it massively does help the channel out and if you're looking forward to seeing any more of my content here on youtube then do make sure to hit that subscribe button and ring that notification bell to be notified when any of my content here on youtube goes live now then though guys, let's run through review quite what has gone on since last time out. It's not been too big of a gap, it's been that three weeks or so in game. Of course we've got two games coming up in today's episode. Now last time out we faced St Pauli and we drew away from home against them with a 2 all draw. A very, very decent result all things considered. After that though, we then went and took on Dresden, who came up from the third division with us last season. We took them on at home and got a very, very disappointing 1-0 defeat. We did not deserve to lose this game whatsoever. They completely offended us. They had like one shot all game to Dresden and we still lost. It was a very, very annoying defeat. But we then bounced back up against Union Berlin, who got relegated from the Bundesliga last season and we beat them 2-1. Now, do take in mind the fact that Union did have a player sent off, which of course did make things a little bit easier, but we got a brace scored from our new signing, Samuel Muliteri, the new striker. He scored a brace, had a very, very good performance, and Berlin really were out of the game for the vast majority of the game. They only scored a goal very, very late on from a set piece. Other than that, they did barely anything in that match. But then after that, we then took on bottom of the league, VfL Osnabrück, and it was a really drab match. We created absolutely nothing. The midfield played quite well, but our strikers just did nothing in the game. Whenever they got the ball, they either just shanked it or just put it straight at the keeper. They just didn't seem to want to win it. And it finished with a nil-nil draw. But in terms of that, as I say, it was an inconsistent showing. We won one, lost one, and drew one in between last episode. And in the league, it means we are sitting up there in eighth. Place. We have a game in hand over a lot of teams above us. In fact, every side above us we have a game in hand of. So if we win it, we can possibly get up to about fifth, sixth position in the division. We lose it, we could find ourselves dropping further down. Now, the first game that we have coming up in today's episode is up against Fortuna Dusseldorf. And then after that, we have Gruyter Furt as well. Two very tough sides. Dusseldorf, who are just below us in the league, and Gruyter Furt, who are up there in third position. So there are going to be some tough matches that is for sure. The first one, though, is Dusseldorf, who we're going to take on away from home. So in terms of the lineup and how we're going to be looking for this match, it'll be crappy casting net because, of course, it will. It's then Florian Hübner with Flavio Ramos and Kevin Kraus as the back three. I've changed the central role to be a central defender on cover now. It's then Diagne at right back. He initially was playing his ball in the field, but I'm going to give him a game out at right back just because... I felt like doing so. Butson, who normally is our right back, is covering at left back. I found we've got a few little injuries and players aren't playing overly brilliantly at the moment in terms of our left back role. So Butson's going in at left back. It's then Yarn Kabai and Benedict Kirsch as the two central midfielders. Salas and Ritter are then in as the attacking midfielders with Munitieri, the guy who scored a brace only two games ago, starting up front. It's a very strong lineup and I'm hoping we can try and maybe nick a draw in this game up against Dusseldorf. Anything that we can salvage from this match, I'll be very, very pleased with. That's how we're going to line up, though. Let's get into it and see quite how we get on. Let's get our side submitted in and we'll see what is going to be happening with this game. As I say, I will definitely take a point in it if we can get one. I really don't know how we're going to do. Dusseldorf have a very decent side. 
and they really, really do. I'm gonna go and point the finger at lads and just say we're the underdogs here, and that zoots us down to the ground. Let's go and cause an upset. No one other than Boots and Ked. I'll say the rest of them I have faith, and majority of the side actually looks quite motivated by that, so that's not too bad. Dusseldorf are playing a flat 4-4-2, so I really don't know how that's gonna get on up against our 5-2-2-1 tactic. It could either work really well, or it could be really, really bad for us. I'm hoping the fact we're gonna have the attacking midfielders can help exploit the gap between their midfield and their defence. But the fact they're gonna have obviously wingers and wing backs, or full backs even, it could mean that they may end up overloading us on those wings. We'll have to wait and see. At the moment it's been a very, very quiet game from us. We've only just had our first shot on target and in the game overall, but we haven't actually seen anything. But saying that, we have got a corner here. Ritter's ball into Hupner, and Florian Hupner scores. I think that's our first goal this season from a set piece. Ritter's set pieces have been really poor overall this season, but thankfully we've seen one actually connect with one of our players and it's even gone into the back of the net. Come on, Hubner with his first of the season and we are 1 0 up here away at Dusseldorf. And then it's just I'm saying that Dusseldorf are then starting a highlight of their own, although that is not a fantastic goal kick. We have got quite lucky with that. Goodbye here. Goodbye, can I just say, in the games of which he has played in, his passing is so good it really really is oh come on okay i thought we we're gonna get i thought we we're gonna lose the ball there but kirsch has got it here now to butson come on get a good ball in here of course he's more of a right back but goodbye to salas to ritter i say salas it should be salas even goodbye again i will eventually get his name into my head hang on lovely little over oh hang on is it gonna get away with diagne oh unlucky unlucky we nice if we can get himself a goal diagne who is now playing at right back as i said earlier he normally is our ball when we feel that he also calls covered at one point as a libero, I can't decide where I want to play him. He has all the attributes of player, border midfielder, but he's someone who doesn't understand how to play there, which is really frustrating. So whenever he plays there, I just get constant messages saying, oh, he shouldn't play there, and he plays like crap as well. And then he can play right back, but he's not very good going forward. So it's a really weird one with Diagne in terms of actually where I want to play him. Still though, we've gone in a half time at 1-0 up. If we can somehow keep it at this, I'll be over the damn moon about it. It's going to say we've got to guard against complacency. Everyone does agree. I'm just going to say to Militieri though, I'm disappointed with him because we've seen absolutely nothing from the new boy and not a great showing from him. And currently, it's worth noting, I think in the league, we have even the third or second worst like goal scoring tally of every side in the entire league. We are really not doing very well going forward. Defensively, we are looking great. Okay, that was great timing. I was about to say, defensively, we're looking really good. We have the best or second best defence in the league. And we've gone and conceded the corner of our own. Fantastic stuff there, lads. A brilliant stuff. Pledal or Pledal with the ball and Semedo, Alpha Semedo, heads it in past Krapikas. Not fantastic stuff there. Just going to go and say encourage to the boys. We haven't been bad, don't get me wrong. It's been a very, very even game. It probably makes sense that it's one all at the moment. I'm just going to sell off Butson though for Hercher. And I may even sell off Salas as well. I'm actually going to. I'm going to sell off Salas for Prevoljak. I'm then going to swap Prevoljak and Ritter over, and then put Prevoljak up front and Mulatieri in as the shadow striker. When Mulatieri scored his brace a couple of games ago, he did so playing as the shadow striker. So I will try him there and see quite how he gets on. Prevoljak, can I just say, if we brought him on loan, has been awful. Absolutely awful. He's played like seven or eight games so far, no goals, not a single one. Really not good enough from him whatsoever. Hang on, here we go. Militieri now in that new Shadow Striker role to Kabai, to Prevoljak. Oh, we could have played that then. Kabai, lovely ball, Diagne. He's put it wide. He's just dragged that shot. As I said, literally a few minutes ago, going forward, the man is not good enough. And he's just proved it there. Oh, that is so disappointing. He should have scored that. I'm going to be honest, I will be happy to take the point, but I am just going to sub off Ritter for Zidane. He's looking very tired. I don't want to risk an injury to one of our key players. So let's get Enzo Zidane on in his place, see if we can maybe nick another goal, or will it finish with a one all draw? As I say, I will definitely take a point. Oh, no. Great clutch there. Great save from Crappy Cast. Really, really good claim there from the keeper. Came out of his goal, was very brave, and still got hold of that corner. Really good stuff. Come on, what are you going to do now, Crappy Cast? He's lumped it up. Come on, Mulatieri, he hasn't won it, sadly. We should be getting that ball, which we have done. Benedict Kirch to Hercher now. Hercher goes in again to Kirsch, and it's a really bad ball. That was awful, but great challenge from Kabai. Come on, let's go. Let's counter-attack. Can we get a late goal here? Yoan Kabai, of course, the old man. He's trying with, a, with his eight pace, whatever it is there. He's got the ball again. Come on, he's passing. Lovely ball. Prevoljak, the man who still hasn't scored, and he still hasn't. 
he still hasn't scored. I think it got deflected by a defender. Indeed, it had done. I think well, we'll just see what happens here. Kabai with the corner. Are we going to get ourselves a late winner from this set piece, or is it going to finish one all? It's not bad ball in. He's got another chance here. Goodbye. Come on. It's in now. Oh, I don't know who it was with the header, but it went just over the bar. It probably means it's going to finish one or Okay, maybe not. There's still two minutes left of the game. There's four minutes added time. We're only into the 92nd minute. There's another chance here. Zimmer, I've just spotted the right back for Dusseldorf. I'm pretty sure he's Jean Zimmer, which if it is, he's a former Kaiserslautern player. Come on. Goodbye. Come on. Let's counter attack. We're looking the better of the two sides, that's for sure. Lumped ball over the top. Prevoljak, is he going to get there first? It's a mistake. Prevoljak, please. He scored it. I said he's been awful. He gets a bit of luck. There was a massive cock up from the Dusseldorf keeper. Vice there. Dominic doesn't come and claim it. But Prevoljak scores a really fluky goal. Just a lumped ball over the top by Kirsch. And it's a massive mistake. I don't know what the keeper was doing. He should have easily got there first. And I like that Prevoljak's goal. I'm pretty sure clipped the first post and hit the other one and still went in. I will take it, though. I think it means we are going to nick the three points. And indeed we do. I don't think we deserve that. I mean, we were probably just about the better side. But whatever. A win is a win. We will take all three points. A awful showing from the opposition goalkeeper there. People to witness off today. You proved them all wrong. Fantastic stuff. A 2-1 win. It pushes us up into sixth place as well. Really, really good stuff. Now, though, of course, we have to go and take on third-placed Gruyter Furt. So I will see you guys for that match in a few seconds. Here we are then now for our second game of the episode and, of course, the final one we will be doing for today. In terms of the squad that's going to be playing for this match now at home to third-positioned Gruyter Furt, it's going to be basically the same side that has just managed to somehow beat Fortuna Dusseldorf away. It's Glafikas in net, Hubner, Ramos and Kraus at the back. I have then brought Francis in as our right back for this match because Diagne's got a slight little knock so I don't want to risk him for this one. Butson carries on at left back. He performed quite well in that last game. Kabai and Kirsch are still as the two central midfielders. Salas and Ritter are the two attacking midfielders. And Mulatieri is starting up front. I was very tempted to start Prevoljak. However, I felt we would stick with Mulatieri because Prevoljak picked up a slight knock while he was away on international duty in between the last match and this one so we're going with that squad let's get into this game and see quite how we get on we are at home but Goitferth are a very very strong side indeed so I will take a point the fact we got three in the last game means I will take whatever we can get in this one even if it's a defeat I'm not gonna be too upset because I didn't expect to beat Dusseldorf in the last one I thought we might draw both of these two games if we were lucky so we've got more points than I expected anyway so we'll just see what happens here with this match a win or a draw though would be fantastic that is for sure and also if we do win it i think it may even get us really close to the top three positions but we can't expect much you can see how decent going to first form and everything like that is at the moment they're playing a 5-2-1-2 tactic as well so we need to see quite how that tactic does up against our 5-2-2-1 tactic they are both very similar styles of play at least generally speaking however i've used them whenever i've come across them anyway but here we are we are of course at home at the fritz volta stadion Come on, lads. Okay, early highlight here. Two minutes in. Good for a free kick. And Krapakas has to pull out a very decent save to tip that wide of the post and out for a corner. That would have been a very, very bad start to the game, should we concede. Is that going to score then from the following up corner? Ramos has had it clear. Really good clearance. Are we going to get a chance to counter attack? No, we're not. Foot manager just tried to tease us and then basically slap us in the face. And wow, okay, at the moment we've got to be very careful because these Greuterfer free kicks are being very, very dangerous currently, as that's the second time they have nearly stuck one in the back of the net. The corners that are following up on them are doing fine with, but the free kicks we are struggling with quite a bit at this moment in time. This car light is still carrying on. I presume it is just going to end. I don't think anything else is going to happen from it unless there is another chance about to be created by either ourselves or by Gluter Furt. Klatzer here, the right back, I think, or right wing back. Tillman now, he's kept the ball on. Is, is this a proper highlight or is it just messing around with us once more? I've got absolutely no idea. Okay, it's a proper highlight, all right, because they've just scored. <laughs> Nuno Sarpe makes it 1-0 to Gluter Furt. Yeah, not a great start from us. The opening 10 minutes, they've been all over us. You wouldn't think we were the home side, that is for sure. I don't really want to watch that again, thank you very much. And okay, another highlight. Three highlights within the first 10 minutes of the game. What is going on? Are we going to go and get an instant reply? Because if we can do, that would be fantastic. Butson's ball out there was awful. I don't know why he was trying to switch to play like that. And now Tillman's in behind, and Tillman scores. Great start, lads. 10 minutes played, 2-0 down. 
well. Not fantastic stuff, if I'm totally honest. And I don't really think we've necessarily done anything wrong. I just think they've had decent set pieces, and that was an error from Butson to play the ball like he did. I don't know why he tried to play the ball across the field in that manner. Uh, oh, no, it's another free kick. Oh, no. Well, somehow that didn't go in. I, I would try and change the tactic with defending the free kicks, but I never know what to do with them. So I don't really... Oh, there's now another set piece here. Corner. And Crappy Cast pulls out another great side. Right, we're changing up the tactics. We're going to go two up top. Because <laughs> we've been awful in the opening few minutes here. Absolutely atrocious. Right, first things first. Kabai can go like that. We're going to put Salis in as the box-to-box. -box. We'll put Ritter in as the advanced playmaker. We'll get Preble Yak onto the pitch. And we'll play Preble Yak and Muletieri up front together. It, it can't be any worse, can it? It can't be any worse than the first 25 minutes of this match. Because we have been utter shite. We have been terrible. We really, really have been. And since changing to that, there's bloody... Oh, I was about to say there's been no highlight. But now we have a highlight in their half. Would it be for us? Francis with a really bad cross. We got lucky, though. Kabai to Preble Yak. Or was that Muletieri? I'm not actually too sure. No, it is Muletieri. And somehow he squeezed that in. I've got no idea. How has he just got that into the back of the net? I do not know. It was terrible goalkeeping. Terrible defending. And we somehow fluked a goal. Really, really weird goal. Just a really weird passage of play. It was really bad at defending there, and then I uh, no idea. That physically shouldn't be possible, but somehow Militieri has scored his third goal of the season. Fair play, Samuel Militieri. He's got his first goal on camera. What a weird first half this has been. Really, really strange this first half. We've got in at half-time at 2-1 down. Since the change of tactic, we haven't looked as awful, but how is it 2-1? When they've had next year almost 2, we've had next year point two. I don't know. I don't care. It's quite funny. I'm going to flash me on so I'm far from please because that was shite. It was really bad from us. It really, really was. That is for Sean. Hopefully a bit of a rocket up the arse can hopefully propel them and have a bit of a better second half in this game. Early highlight. Ritter's done well to intercept there. Really poor throwing from Goitifer. Come on, Ritter. Come on. Let's actually see something here. Come on. Ritter to Preble Yak. Back to Ritter. I think we're dawdling on the ball a bit too much here. France is now on that right side of the pitch. Salas as well. Salas, I, oh, I can always say his name wrong. It's Salas, not Salas. Moutier, is he onside? I don't think he is. I think he's off. They're gonna, VAR is going to get involved. Of course it is, because VAR always has to get his grubby little mitts on everything, doesn't it? Oh, checking VAR, and he's been disallowed. Of course it has. Right, we're going to make a change. I'm going to change something up. Butson, because he's been crap, can come off for Kircher. And we'll go like that. Just a straight swap. And then what I will do in a minute as well, or as we get later into the game, I will probably sub off either Ritter or Salas. But we apparently have a free kick from a pretty dangerous area. Ritter here, he's going to set piece. He goes for it from range. He hits the bar, but Salas, he scores and he's offside as well. Oh, great. Now VAR is going to get involved again. Of course it is. And it's going to disallow it again because that's what it always does. It never, ever allows it, does it? No, goal disallowed. What a surprise. We've now scored three goals but had two disallowed for offside. And, I mean, he's just about offside. But, oh, God's sake. Still, we're looking better with the two strikers up top. So we will leave it as is for the rest of this half and see how we get on. I'm just going to say DeMar Morph on the lads. We're going to go attacking as well for the last few minutes here. We've got 15, 20 minutes to play. I'm also going to take off Salas. We'll get Enzo Zidane on. And if no, I'm not. I'm going to get Erhart on actually in his place. We'll go like that. I reckon that's not too bad of a decision, I think. And then we'll just leave it. I'm not going to change anything else up. I've just seen, by the way, Stuttgart are beating VFL Osnabrück, who we couldn't score against. They're beating them 7-0. In fact, no, they're beating them 8-0. What on earth is going on in that match? It's going very attacking for the last few minutes in this match here. With Gloria de Fert. There's a highlight here in the 89th minute. Are we going to nick an equaliser? Or are Gloria de Fert going to rub salt into the Kaiser Slauten wounds? I don't quite know. But I'll be honest, I don't think we really deserve anything from it. Even though we have had two disallowed goals, I just don't think we've done enough to really deserve to have a second goal. Militieri here, though, is he going to have a chance? He is. That is absolutely atrocious from the Italian youngster. I think it's going to finish with a 2-1 defeat. It certainly is. I'm going to go and say I can't fault your performances there. They weren't that bad. We just They just outplayed. They're a far better side than us anyway. I'm unsurprised that they were as dominant as they were. And obviously, 8-1, that game finished. What was going on over there in Stuttgart? Flipping it. That is some pretty crazy stuff. But a win against Dusseldorf, a defeat against Gordon Firth, I'll take that. I really will. I, I thought it may be the other way around, or maybe two draws. 
but we weren't horrendous anyway. In terms of the league, that means we finish up the episode in seventh place currently. Some other sides around us have got to play games in hand, but we do finish currently in seventh position. In terms of what we're going to come back for for next episode, though, considering the fact that they have just stuck eight goals past Osnabrück, we are most definitely going to be coming back for the Stuttgart game at home, which is going to probably be a very, very painful experience in getting smashed, I imagine. And then we'll also come back for the Sandhausen away match as well. So it'll be those two games that will be coming up in Friday's episode. Overall though guys, that just about wraps up this episode here today. And as I've just said, I'm pretty pleased with the overall outcome of those two games. Again, we still continue to be inconsistent as anything, a win and a loss. It's just We cannot get any consistent form going at the moment. But considering the sides we were playing, I will take three points from a possible six, considering the teams that we have just faced. Of course, coming up next time around though, Stuttgart at home is going to be a very, very painful one. I highly imagine. The fact they've just stuck eight goals past Osnabrück. Why am I choosing to face them? I have no idea. But it should be quite a fun one next time around. As well, though, guys, if you did enjoy today's video, please do chuck a like down onto it. As I always say, it always matters to help the channel out. And if you're looking forward to seeing any more of my content here on YouTube, such as any of my FN21 tactics videos, the latest of which went live earlier this week they should be linked here on the screen or any more of the fm21 red devil revival series here at kai Slauson, then do make sure to hit that subscribe button and ring that notification bell to be notified when any of my content here on youtube goes live but guys thank you very much for watching and i will see you again next time